with, you know, there is one lawsuit. We have an injunction. And the injunction was issued by a very conservative judge. The turning point, if, for those of you who weren't in the courtroom, it was very interesting. The judge came in and basically at the beginning said, I pretty much made my mind up. And we knew that he was politically conservative and that isn't going to favor us in the sense that this is a corporation and, you know, we were pretty nervous about it. Until one of Sutter's attorney, uh, attorneys got up and said, uh, Judge, these people have no right to tell a private company how to run its business. And he only interrupted either side one time. And he said, did you say private company? He said, you are a public benefit charity, much like a public utility. You have a monopoly. You're not a private company. And I think in the judge's mind, that's when we were allowed the injunction. Unfortunately, Sutter has appealed that, so it's going to go to the Court of Appeals probably in the next month or so, as well as finding arbitration, which typically is closed. That means nobody can attend and will be in Sacramento. That was at Sutter's request, so this is kind of interesting. The lease agreement with the healthcare district says, in the event of a dispute, the dispute will result, be resolved by binding arbitration in Sacramento. Sutter says the lease died, it is a dead document, 20 years ago. But they like the part about the binding arbitration in Sacramento because it greatly increases the expense to this community to litigate, and it excludes the community from any input. And I think as the judge looked out and saw the sea of concerned faces in the audience, it might have had some impact on it. We'll, we'll never know, perhaps. But it's a huge advantage to Sutter it costs maybe $2,000 to get our two attorneys down to Sacramento. Finding arbitration is $1,465 an hour, plus our attorney's fees, plus their transportation. Now, right after the injunction was granted, Sutter Legal contacted our healthcare district and asked how much money they have. It's a matter of public record. And the answer is we have a whole lot less than they do. So. They pick out the part of the lease agreement that they like. They exclude the community from the binding arbitration. They also challenge it in the Court of Appeals. And still, there's a local board sitting in that room that could end all of this. They could say, we take back our vote on regionalization. We're going to rescind the vote. Everything goes away. All the expense to the community. The healthcare district can start spending money on expanding services. My dream was to get chemotherapy reinstituted. We can easily do this here, but not with all this other nonsense going on. And yet, the board doesn't do it. So, yes? To the board's board member? Right. Yeah, the one, address them to Mr. Suksi on that list there, yes. and they'll get to the board. I wasn't able to get their uh, personal addresses, and I, I They'll get, to, they'll get to them through Mr. Suksi if you put letters to him as the CEO of Sutter Coast Hospital. I wouldn't trust him. I'd rather write to each of the nine board members. If you send me a carbon, I'll make sure they come to the boardroom. Thank you. Which is more effective, an email or a letter? I think a letter is much more effective. Um, emails, you're never sure if they even got to somebody's inbox or in spam or deleted. A letter is, to me, a much more powerful statement of concern. Mm -hmm. Yes? I'd like to comment on the uh, letter proposition. If uh, we don't know, I don't know, I've practiced law for 30 years and I don't know the answer to a question that I am sure Sutter doesn't know either, and that is, can we make it fly if someone experiences more cost or loses uh, uh, health as a result of Sutter not living up to their duty of care? If so, they could, if that is a legitimate, cognizable uh, detriment to them, they could be faced with people saying, this cost me 
X thousand dollars because you wouldn't let me in the hospital and if you had been living up to the standard of care that your contract says you're obligated to do, I wouldn't have had to spend that money. I mean, uh, uh, if everybody that sends them says, if that occurs to me, if I have to sustain additional costs because you won't let me in, because today you cut out half your beds and so you didn't have a bed for me, I will sue you for every additional penny that this took. And I will sue you for wrongful death if someone died on it. Now, I don't know the answer is whether that uh, will lose or fly, but I do know that it'll, it would bankrupt Sutter even to answer all those lawsuits, and I'd suggest on a personal basis, I plan to sue you if you don't let me into that hospital under the circumstances which Seaside would have let you into the hospital. You know, I, I think that's a very powerful argument because the lease agreement says Sutter was invited to this community to provide expanded care even after construction of the new hospital. Sutter is claiming the lease agreement became dead when the new hospital was built, but there's language in the lease agreement that says that promise, that obligation <coughs> remains. And the other thing that the judge did was kind of gave us, a, I think, a, a heads up in terms of law in the sense that Sutter said the lease agreement died 20 years ago, yet they continue to follow it even today, we still have a local board. That's one of the stipulations of the lease agreement is a majority of the board must reside in Del Norte County. And so the lawyers in the room will know more than I, but he was hinting that, let's say you even accept that the contract did expire, but both parties follow it for more than 20 years. It has some standing just from that measure. And uh, that's something that we're following up on.